All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to do an update to a very popular video that I covered about a month ago, which was titled, Wife Complains, I Turn My Husband Into a Monster After She Gets Pregnant. And guys, as a quick review, that story I did a month ago, like I just said, and I was all about the gal who posted her story, her sob story, if you will, about how she ruined her marriage and completely turned her husband into a freaking monster after she not only cheated on him, but also got pregnant with uh, some other dude's baby. And if you recall that story, guys, she shares how she met him in high school. They were like high school sweethearts, senior in high school. He was the popular kid, football player, the in crowd, and she was not. She was into comic books and all that type of thing. Somehow they clicked, started dating, college, all that, and they got married shortly after college, which was dumb, but is what it is. And all that time, he's been a great husband to her. In the beginning, he really had to work hard to get his foot in the door with his career, took odd jobs, did what he could to provide. She didn't have to work, so he took care of everything, had a couple kids. But throughout their marriage, she has next to zero interest in the SCX at all. Okay? He had a very strong appetite he, on multiple fronts, but she had next to no interest in the SEX, and it was an issue. But he still stayed with her, still loved her. And then after the COVID restrictions, lockdowns ended, she went out on a girls' night, big surprise there, met some dude at a bar, and ended up hooking up with him over at the nearby motel. This is the same girl that had no interest in the SEX, but when some other dude was hitting on her, well, it turns out she got pregnant and all that, and it led to eventually he found out, the fireworks, and she had the pregnancy terminated, and now he's still living there because pretty much by him sta divorcing her would cost him way too much money in the alimony, child support. And pretty much he's living in the garage or above the garage. And he's back to dating and hooking up and it's making her crazy. And he's being obviously not very friendly to her. And so ended with that whole thing going down. Now as to the part two of the update here, this is with him writing in and sharing. He saw her post, and now he's sharing his side of the story about how things, what, the, what was really going on the whole nine yards. So you get, she says, now again he says in this whole situation. That'd be a very good one to cover here. So, starts off, or he starts, he says, uh, I was told to post here. We're not as one after her infidelity. I'm still dealing with it in an unhealthy manner. When my possible ex-wife sat me down and showed me her post about what she did, and I do not know if I was acting like a monster. I'm hurt, I'm angry, and she left out her condition. My possible ex has atypical autism and a savant disorder. She could hear any tune and play it flawlessly. Just by looking at someone, she knows their measurements and could make them any clothing. So, in the previous story, there were things about her you could just connect the dots that were a little different about her and her personality. Now, here we go. She is, she has atypical autism and a savant disorder. So there you go, which explains some things. Uh, when I met her, I liked her a lot, but everyone kept telling me not to date her because she wasn't right in the head. However, I was drawn to her. I love the fact that she came to school every day dressed in the outfits and costumes that she made. I would talk to her every time about her outfits. Learning about different anime and comic characters. It wasn't my thing, but seeing her face light up just put a smile on my face. So, very interesting situation. She was definitely different, and he was the popular football player in crowd type. And yet, this goes to show you the opposites attract, but people warned him they're not quite right in the head. And I've told you guys countless times, to get the gals that have some challenges, if you will, in that department, it's best to just move on. Let her be some other guy's problem. Don't be the hero. Don't be the white knight because you're going to be, it's going to come. There'll be no, as the saying is, no good deed goes unpunished. And that's what you're going to get. And this is what he got. He says, I began learning about her condition. In the 90s, the internet wasn't widely available. So I went to the library and several clinics and spoke to many people familiar with autism so I can be with her. I wanted to do the work because she was worth it. That's very nice that he liked her and was attracted to her, but I, I can sense some white knight thing going on here in the background. Never a good thing. My friends and family thought I was insane. Hell, even her parents were against it. But when we started dating, she began making efforts and, it and was improving. We've, be we've been seeing the same counselor since we started dating, mostly for her. <clears throat> However, sometimes it does help me too. Yes, I had to make a lot of compromises for her. 
I dealt with a lot of her tantrums and when she had sensory situation. I dealt with her a lot because I loved her. To me, she was worth it. So, as you can see here, and if you guys remember the first story, this guy did a lot to make things work. And that shows a lot about his character as a good man. The problem is, when guys do that, oftentimes that kindness is perceived for weakness. And they are everything from outright treated like crap to just neglected and taken advantage of and all that. You can't make the girl your sole reason for getting up in the morning. You can't make her the center of your universe. When you do that, it makes them lose respect for you. You can be good to them and all that, loyal, good to them, take care of them, as long as that's reciprocated, it's matched. But oftentimes in these stories, it's not. And a lot of times these guys keep doing it and more to get them to like, to like them better, treat them better, and they get the exact opposite of what they're trying. A guy has to put his needs and himself first. He has to check her on her BS and bad behavior when she acts like an a-hole. Just the same way that she, no doubt, would check him when he's acting like a jackass. See? But you can see right here the, the problems already. He means well, but he, just, he didn't understand back then a lot of the reality of how things are. We were married a month after graduating college. Smack! Too early. She wanted a cosplay wedding, and I did it because it made her comfortable. SEX anywhere from one to six times a month, sometimes none at all. Her mood swings and her obsessions with her manga, or her obsessions with making sure our kids didn't have ASD. I wanted more kids, but due to her issues and fears about passing her ASD, I got a vasectomy. That mess, that mess with me for a while. I really did want more kids. When you're with someone with ASD and it's not like uh, what they show on TV, I watch some shows like The Good Doctor or Atypical and they capture my wife's ASD perfectly. However, the way their friends and family act around them in TV is magic. Yeah, well, by and large, everything presented on TV and movies is BS or magic, as he says. I'm sorry if I'm rambling. I'm just trying to paint a picture here. He says, yes, I'm fat. I'm 5'11", and I've been struggling and losing my excess body fat for years. I used to be a football player, and in high school, I was 250, all muscle. 5'11", 250, solid. That's a big freaking dude. It's like a bulldozer. At the time of the affair, I was 228 with man boobs and a gut. The doctor told me it's stretched skin, but it does make me self-conscious when I look at myself in the mirror. My possible ex was, was everything to me. She was the only thing on my mind. I didn't want to masturbate because I only wanted her. The lack of SEX between us was the main issue for me. A man's got needs. I made that clear in the other one. And clearly women have needs, but if they got needs, they take care of it. And in the other video, and you're seeing here, he didn't cheat on her. Even though he had needs and she wasn't interested, he didn't cheat on her. And notice how he said he, okay, I got a weight problem and all that. Well, you know what? No guy should let themselves go. Okay, even if you're working hard, you got to find time to eat healthy. If that requires extra time to do some meal prep on the weekends or I don't know what, so you're not eating garbage at the last minute. And you got to get some exercise. Even if you, if it's just a couple days a week for 15 minutes doing a, a super set of squats with your own body weight, some push-ups and some crunches, something. You can't let yourself go, but a lot of people do. They can be athletes in high school and college, and then once they get married and have kids, they either stop because they're just busy all the time, taking care of their family, which I do respect, but you can't let that happen, or they just stop giving a shit because like, well, I'm old now. I got a ring on my finger. I got a ring on her finger. She ain't going anywhere, and then she gains weight. You gain weight, and round and round we go. Not a good thing. Guys have to stay in shape and stay healthy, Okay personal trainer here for a lot of you guys that may not be aware of that as of yet. Anyway, says here, oh, by the way, notice how he was saying my ex was the only thing on my mind and everything to me. Not a good place to be. That's the crap you see in the movies. Making her your world. They don't respect guys that do that. Anyway, he goes on. He says, uh, the lack of SEX between us was the main issue for me. Oral was basically non-existent. Well, except when we had a P O R N S E X. But even then, she would go down on me for 10 minutes while I can be down on her for three times that amount. Smack. You know why I'm doing that. If she's giving you 10 minutes, she gets 10 minutes. If she's giving you five minutes, she gets five minutes. It's not she's giving you 10 minutes on occasion and you're giving her 30. Oh, no, no, no. Even then, when it was over, she was done. 
Round two or three was extremely rare. I can count on both hands how many BJs and uh, backdoor action I got through our 26 years together. I'm assuming he means not him, her. I'm actually kind of shocked she was going for the uh, Hershey Highway loving at all, but eh, okay. I tried to spice things up, tried to have her wear her cosplay costumes, but uh, but I would get yes to death. At night, she would wait till it was late as possible and then want the SDX, but by that time, I was tired. She did that on purpose. I tried to get her to go on a hike so we could have SDX in the woods, but that got turned down as well. One time, I took off on a Friday and waited for the kids to go to school and tried to have you know it with my wife, and it was denied. My wife never said, I love you first. She eventually stopped showing me affection. She didn't kiss me at first. She doesn't lean against me when we're sitting down. Everything is a response. Nothing is initiated, and I was blind. And I loved her. So he is making all the effort. Now, some people might say, well, you know what? She does have autism, and there could, that could be playing a factor there, which is true. But it sounds like in the beginning, she was much more affectionate and physical when she had known him less. And let's keep in mind here, she still had the one-night stand with some dude she met at the bar. So she has got no problem being affectionate, even with strangers. It's not like she had to you know, get to know some dude a long time here. So... Her actions are communicating everything. And this, does this not sound like a stereotypical marriage in many ways? So for you guys out there that had an amazing relationship with your girl, be aware, taking the, if things go wrong and how you can get uh, raked over the coals and divorce carts aside, the likelihood is your girl, you have an amazing thing with, and are hooking up three times a day, that ain't going to happen once that ring is on her finger. And if you're getting a... BJ's and other fun extra bonus things quite regularly, you may not so much when you get older and get married and there are kids. Sure, people are busy with kids. Sure, people are tired from kids. But still, there's a stereotype here. Be aware that you guys that uh, think you, you can get married and, and the same bedroom fun is going to be the same. It ain't. There are exceptions, but generally speaking, it's not. Anyway, it goes on here. He says, yes. I did frustrate my issues with her. Yes, I expressed my frustration. Yes, I tried to make compromises. And yes, I can be a bit of a jerk when I'm not having the you-know-what. But when you're the one who is constantly giving and the other one is taking, while you while making you feel guilty, when you want to be feel wanted, it gets old. Yeah. Part of this thing is him just wanting to be wanted and be found attracted and desired. Uh, have I ever thought about cheating on her? Never. Have I had opportunities? Plenty. So when I got that email telling me that my wife was knocked up, it didn't take very well. I did put my hands on her because I was hurt. She was my wife. She was the love of my life, the only woman I vowed my loyalty to, and she effing cheated. I needed to know how many times I believed her when she told me it was the only the one time. In the story, she went out on a girls' night when lockdown stopped. They were in a bowling alley, and then they were. she was at a bar waiting to sober up, met some dude. He was smooth talking to her. She enjoyed the attention, and boom, went over to the motel and hooked up with him. And one incident, she gets pregnant, according to her story. And remember, she secretly had the procedure, speaking code here, and he found out about it. This is how this thing went down. He says, at the bowling alley. She sat there at the bar for hours talking to random guys and a woman, and they picked up at the alley. It took a while, and I found him, and then I attacked him. Was I wrong? Maybe, but it did feel make me feel good. I couldn't stand the sight of her. I went to several attorneys, and I was told that because she had ASD, and we have two kids together, her after alimony and child support, my personal income will be $750 a month. And I was told that it would be even more financially beneficial if I just stayed married. Even a non-contested or no-divorce lawyer will need the same because it would be the judge's decision, and I was told going that route may take home might be $500 a month. Translation, he saw some lawyers, and they said, yeah, you're going to be screwed royally because she doesn't work, so the alimony payments, the child support, house is no doubt going to her, so you're going to have $750 a month if you're lucky after all that is done. And he's not going to be able to live that way. And if you recall the first story, then he started living in the garage or built a place in the garage or something like that. And that's where things left off with her. He goes on, he says, so I converted my garage into an apartment. I treated my possible ex like shit. <clears throat> Was it wrong for making sure she got in a, a uh, procedure for me? No. Why would I want a constant reminder of her affair around me? I would have never looked at the child the same as if it was my own. 
I would never be a father to that kid. To me, that would be more damaging to a child. A few days after her procedure, I downloaded Tinder, and for the first time in 26 years, I had you know what with another woman. I felt guilty, I had a nervous stomach, and I almost ran out of the room. But the woman made me feel wanted, and it felt good. This guy made up for lost time, if you recall. He was hooking up with lots of chicks. Making up for lost time. And take a while, guess who wasn't too happy with that. Uh, everyone I met through the apps made me feel wanted, and I went overboard. It wasn't the SCX I thought I needed or wanted. It was the initiation and the affection. I know that might sound may make me sound shallow, but when I said this during uh, our counseling session, our counselor understood what I was saying. My possible ex kept telling me she didn't know why she cheated, which confused me. I could ask her to tell me about a random day in the years we've been together, and she will tell me her every little detail about that day, and yet this one slips her effing mind. Probably because, well, I'm going to probably say, one, there's bullshit going on here, but two, also, it's possible, given how she is, that she sees things all, maybe in a logical sense, who knows, but because the what went down there was in the emotion sense, that doesn't compute. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I told her I slept with those women to hurt her, to make her feel like a, man, like a man after she cheated, and I kept going because I was getting something from these random hookups that she wasn't giving me for years. The times my possible ex and I hooked up didn't feel the same as before. It felt to me like she was doing everything just to try to fix us, like she was on purpose and I felt it. She wasn't having you know what with me because she wanted to be with me. She was having you know what with me to fix what she did. So I kicked her out when it was done. Every time I felt it. It's not because she wanted to be with me. She was doing it because she wants to fix our marriage. Yeah, there you go. This is very interesting hearing his side to the story because in the other one, yeah, once he started hooking up with all those women, guess what? Now now suddenly she wants to hook up all the time. And yes, it's because she wants to fix the marriage and not lose him, not because she was attracted to him or drawn to him. And I might add, she had competition. And when women have competition for, the, for a guy they like or the guy they have, oh, it's a different ballgame. That's why it's in your interest, guys, to take care of yourself and be a guy that women are attracted to because, believe me, your lady will know it and she'll be more likely to be on her best behavior. I said, more likely. But if no other women want you, it's like, pfft. I expressed my feelings on the matter and she was shocked that I said that. She insisted that she wanted to have you know it with me and, and that she wanted us to be the same and I told her even if we start over, it will never be the same. It'll never be the same. I'll never trust her and never see her again. Never. And too much damage has been done. So I began to start seeing a therapist. Mostly it helped me overcome this trauma because an affair is traumatic. It cuts deep and does it does make you feel empty. It makes you feel like all the time you spent together was for nothing. All the sacrifices that were made were a joke at your expense. In the beginning, I had my kids tested to make sure they were mine. Very smart, dude. That had to be hard, but very smart. I couldn't believe anything out of my possible ex's mouth. She tried to get our counselor to get her sodium pentanol so she can prove to me that she never cheated before and didn't mean to cheat. However, I told her it wouldn't make any difference. Yeah, he's done. You can see it. The only reason he's not out of town is because he'd be just destroyed because of the alimony and uh, child support payment. So I think he's just like, fine, I'll live here in the garage, do what I want. It's obviously a better deal. And probably when the kids are old enough, See ya. I deleted my apps and haven't done anything in two months. Three weeks ago, my possible ex and I had you know what again. It was our 21st wedding anniversary. However, when we were having you know what, I could tell she was doing it out of obligation because it was our anniversary and I left when it was done. I told her uh, ad nauseum what I need and it's still not clicking. So I told her if she truly wants to fix this, she needs to tell her parents about what happened. I will not tell my friends and family. They will convince her to leave convinced me to leave her. As much as they like her, they always had issues with her ASD. Her parents, however, would keep it between us and they can help her if, if it conti I continue to decide to leave her. My oldest is 11 years old and my second born just turned 10. Unless I get a massive raise, I will be here for the next eight years. That's a long time under the same roof to, have, to hate someone. Would I forgive her? I don't know, but I will never forget. You never forget. Ever. You forgive because essentially you don't want to walk around hating your heart and let that person destroy you, but forget, oh hell no. I can honestly say that I don't see her the same way. I no longer see this woman who I would do anything to make her happy. 
Well, that's a problem. I no longer see my wife. I see a woman who broke my heart. They say that time heals all wounds, but it's going to be a very long while before mine starts to heal. A very long time. Well, there you go. That is his side of the story. And that's where things kind of left off on her end in terms of the like up in the air. And it is a, that is a shitty situation. Because of the laws, he she's cheating on him, got pregnant. There's all the proof of her having scheduling the procedure and all that. Still, he'll get hammered with the uh, in the divorce with the alimony payments, with the child support, no doubt her getting the house and all that, and he didn't have very little to live on and all that. Yeah, he could stay at his brother's or friend's house for a little bit, but or get a big giant raise, I don't know, but this is a situation where really the guy's trapped. So for you guys out there that are watching this, that are single, that have girlfriends, think you want to get married one day, be aware of the things that can happen to you. And if things go south, you could be like this guy. Where it's either you're after all the payments you got to make, you're stuck with very little to live on, or you're stuck in the same house to the kids get out of high school. This guy may very well just stay there living in that garage, biding his time until those kids are 18 years old, legal adults, he no longer has to do child support, and then he can move on. That's a long time to be under the same roof with someone you hate right now if they'll betray me. And reconciliation, I just don't see it happening because I just think it's not there for her. She doesn't feel it. And he can tell whenever they have the you-know-what because he can just tell she's doing it out of obligation to get him back, not because she feels something. And he wants to be wanted and you know and loved and all that. He's not getting that. So a lot of morals to these, these two particular stories. But as I said before, guys, don't be that white knight. Don't be that hero. If she's got uh, some challenges, she's got some issues, whatever that may be, whatever that definition is, it's not your job to be the hero, to fix her and all that, because you could be then dealing with all that crap. Look what he was dealing with. He openly admitted it because he loved her so much and such a connection with her and a bond. He stayed anyway, and he really bent over backwards for her. And that's admirable in terms of being a good guy, but look what it got him. So you got to be careful. That's why I do these stories. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below and what you think about this. Let the, let, uh, let me hear your versions of this. If you guys have ever been through anything like this, let's hear about it. And, guys, also, you come up with a really good, if you've got a really good story like to share, by all means, email to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to it, and I definitely will later on down the road. And this also includes good articles, news stories, and crazy stories I can use on my other channel, They Did What. And if you haven't subscribed to my other channel, They Did What, definitely check it out. It's all the crazy stories you can find online. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.